I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America. Hello, Beaver Lake Bulldogs. We just wanted to say that we miss you so much and we are excited for this new phase that we are starting today and you will be hopefully logging into your teacher's websites and getting all of the new learning each and every day. It's supposed to be 30 minutes for each class. So let us know if you have questions or if you need any help. And I thought each week I would answer questions that I'm receiving. So email me and I will respond through video. So Brody's gonna help read some of the questions so far. How do I get stuff from my locker? Yes, we're getting lots of emails about how do you get all of your notebooks or things from your locker. And right now, we're still under the order to stay at home, to stay healthy. So as soon as they lift that, we will come up with a plan for how everybody can get access to what's in their locker. So stay tuned. How will we get our yearbooks? Yes, we are still producing our yearbook this year and they're gonna deliver it, I think in June. So we will have an opportunity for everybody. Uh, we will safely distribute those yearbooks to you. Um, there'll also be an opportunity for you to return any library books that are still out there. So we're working on that one. Stay tuned. A scheduled, what if I can't attend a scheduled online class or office hour? Yeah, so a lot of your teachers have been starting to post when they're available online for office hours or when they might try um, meeting live. And if you can't attend any of those sessions, that's okay. They will videotape a portion and put it on their website for you to view at any time. And if you can't attend office hours, you can always email them or post a question into Teams and they'll respond that way. How do we know what's going on? How do you know what's going on? Uh, you can go to our website or check e-news and uh, you can always read all the emails that are coming to you. I know it might be overwhelming, but a lot of information is there at your fingertips and please reach out if something's confusing or you don't understand and we are here to help you. So thank you for those questions so far and we hope that you are ready to go. I know our staff's been working really hard to make lessons for you, so uh, we can't wait to see you online. We'll talk to you next week. Bye. Hi everybody, I'm Ms. Eisenberg. I'm one of the school counselors and I hope that you're all holding up during our building closure. I wanted to take a minute to share with you a resource available to you and that is our school counseling website. I'm gonna share my screen and show you how to find our school counseling website and some of the things that you will find that are posted there. So from Beaver Lakes uh, homepage, you can either hover over student life and then find counseling there, or you can scroll down a little bit and you'll see a link to our site here as well. All right, so this is our homepage and um, Mrs. Offant, Mr. Hemker, and myself, we are updating each week um, more information and resources that you can check out here on our site. If you hover over the school closure tab, there are family resources that you can look at. And examples of these include food resources. Um, our district is providing meals to any student um, in our district who might need um, access to that. You can click the district set link and find out how to access that. Uh, there's also information about how to request a laptop or get support with internet access. So take a look here if you need anything. Um, and if you need help navigating this, you're more than like, please reach out to your school counselor because we can help you with that process as well. Um, for each week, we've also been posting a different theme. Um, and each theme has its own set of resources. So our most recent one is joy and self-compassion. Here we have um, a kindness challenge that you can participate in. This example is go for a walk and identify five things that you are grateful for that exists within a 10 minute walk of where you live, All right? 
We also have different uh, videos and articles that you can learn more about. Um, like this example is a, the difference between self-compassion and self-esteem. We also have different activities that you can engage with. Um, we've got laughing yoga, different art projects. Mrs. Scent even put together a tutorial to learn how to paint Mount Rainier. So if you're interested in learning how to do that with Mrs. Scent, you can click there. All right. Um, this is a normal time. This is not a normal time. Um, and having increased stress or anxiety is a natural response to everything. So it's really important to take care of yourselves. Um, establishing routines and trying to create some kind of structure within your day is helpful. And it's easy to slide on that right now, especially without the normal school day to help build that structure in for you. So if you find that you're sleeping in really late or staying up really late and you're you know, procrastinating on assignments, you can reach out to your school counselor and we can help you try to create some structure. Um, and also just make sure that you're staying physically active, that you're drinking water, um, you know, your basic self-care needs are being met as well, okay? Um, you can also check out our social emotional page which has additional resources for you to review. We do have a section on suicide prevention with some links that you can check out there, more information about stress and anxiety. Um, your school counselors are available for you to connect with during the school week, Monday through Friday, between 7.30 and 3. You can reach out to us. Um, if you just want to say hi, if you have a question about your schedule for next year, if you want help structuring your school day, um, here is our contact information. If you're going through a tougher time or if one of your friends is going through a tough time and um, you need support more urgently, you can reach out to the crisis text line or contact um, a parent or guardian who lives with you um, to access support more more quickly. All right. So we hope that you uh, take the opportunity to, you know, look through our website. We hope that you're all doing well. And we can't wait until we return to school so we can see you all in person. Stay healthy and stay safe. And we will see you soon. Here are some examples of models, posters, students made of the electromagnetic spectrum in eighth grade science, and how we as humans use this natural phenomena of radiation light energy to make the world a better place. Scientists have created this organization system to help us understand radiation more easily. Students were asked to create a model of this spectrum starting with the longest wavelength, which has the least amount of energy, to the shortest wavelength, which has the most energy and can be extremely harmful, aka gamma rays. Next, to each type of wave, students listed how humans use that type of radiation to make life easier, to make the world a better place, or to solve problems. First, you have the cells. Next, come the organelles, the nucleus. is the best, holds genes, DNA, and all that mess. But inside, there's this organelle that tries its hardest to hide. It's called the nucleolus. And creating ribosomes is its focus. The goal of a ribosome is to create protein. Everybody has them, even the mind of Wolverine. The mitochondria gives you energy. You still have to pay a food fee. It plants the chloroplast, creates sugar, but not the type you put in a cooker. It plants on the outside of it all. There's a grand, mighty cell wall. There's Golgi bodies, the male man, which tends to to the cell membrane, the guard stand. is from the plant and animal cells, but they're very red plants, as you can tell. Cytoplasm is a jelly-like substance. Each person has a hundred thousand. Animals have lysosomes, which have many functions. 
It's a waste remover. Storage tank it gives foreign invaders the punches. And a cosmetic coolant is the last. To be it, transporting protein is the last. This is the end of my song. Let me ring that gong. Hi Bulldogs, it's Miss Sunt here. The counseling website's theme this week is joy and compassion. And one thing they want to encourage people to do is to try something new. And especially something that can be really calming and soothing, give themselves a little bit of a brain break and have a mindful practice. So I'm going to show you how to do a really simple painting. It doesn't matter if you've taken art classes or consider yourself artistic or anything like that. If you're totally new to painting, you can try this out. And it's a really fun, soothing activity to calm your brain and do something creative. So come join me. Today we're going to do a really simple mountain landscape. And there are a few materials I'm gonna use. First of all, I have watercolor paper here that I've taped down. I have a couple of different brushes. I'll probably just stick to using one of them so you don't need a lot of different brushes. I have a jar of water and I have some watercolor paint. And mostly I'm gonna be using blue and purple today. I also have a mechanical pencil because I'm gonna sketch out our mountain first. I always really like painting Mount Rainier, so I thought we would try a really simple version of that. And I'm gonna start about halfway up the paper. And do my best to just kind of draw what I think Mount Rainier looks like. You can erase it if you don't like it and try again. Really simple. So up here is going to be my sky. I'm going to paint the mountain and then I'm going to do some hills below. The first thing I'm going to do is the sky. And what I'm going to do first is put some water on my brush. Swirl it around. And I'm going to put this water on the sky area of my paper. I'm getting the sky area wet so that when I put down the blue sky color, it can all flow and blend together and make a really pretty blue sky. I've put water all over the sky and you can see that it's pretty wet. You can see that shine. If I move my paper around, it'll start to pool. All the water will flow to one area. So I might wait 30 seconds while the paper starts to soak it in before adding my blue. You can use any blue watercolor paint you have. I think I want a nice light sky. I'm thinking ahead to spring. Well, I guess it already is spring, isn't it? I'm thinking ahead to warmer weather. So I'm gonna do a nice light sky. Almost turquoise. I've put the blue color on my brush. I've used a lot of water. I put water on my brush first and then gone into the paint so that there's a puddle of paint that's kind of like the consistency of milk. And now I'm going to use my brush back and forth horizontally to put that blue color down. I'm trying not to go over the mountain because I don't want the blue to get there because the mountain is in front of the sky. And because this is wet, you could also use gravity to help you out. If you tip your paper, then the color's gonna start flowing down towards the edge and do some of that work for you. Maybe you tip it the other way. 
you can see how it flows. I might want this a little bit darker. So I swirl around the brush in the water to get more water on my brush. I go back to that blue. And again, I'm just going horizontally back and forth. I might tip my paper. You might find as you're getting water on your paper that it does something called buckling, which means the paper starts to warp like that. That's totally normal. That's part of the drying process. Taping down your paper can help with that. Avoid some of that buckling. Waiting for water to soak in for a minute or two can also help because then you're not getting absolute puddles of water. Now I've got a nice blue sky. You can let this air dry or you can take a hair dryer and on a low heat go over it and start to dry it. And this is going to dry a little bit lighter than what it looks like right now. So you can always add more of the blue to get it darker if you want. So I'm gonna let this dry and then we're gonna move on to the mountain. This sky is dry and you can see that it's a little bit lighter than when it was wet. And now we're gonna move on to the mountain, Mount Rainier. Mount Rainier usually has a lot of snow on it, especially this time of year. So I'm going to leave a lot of the mountain white. I'm not going to add in white paint for the snow. I'm going to let the white of the paper be the snow. And I'm going to add in some shadows for rocks and different areas of the mountain that are darker or are just in shadow. And for that, I'm going to use kind of a purpley blue color. And you can make purple by mixing red and blue, or you might have a purple paint already. Either one's fine, use what you have. When I look at Mount Rainier, especially when I'm driving on 520 and looking down south at it, there's usually this kind of like carved out place right there that's in a lot of shadow. I'm also going to be putting shadow right here and just a little bit here and there to show the different rocks. I'm using a pretty light color. So when I make my purple, I add in some water so that it's a really uh, light puddle. Feel free to watch where I put in the shadows and then go back and try it yourself after watching it first. You can see how light that purple is, and it's gonna dry even lighter. If you put down a light color and you want it to be darker, that's a really easy thing to do. But if you put down a dark color and realize it was too dark and you want it lighter, that is harder to do. So it's always good to go from light to dark. These hills coming up to the mountain, I'm going to use more of that purple color because they're lower, meaning they have less snow on them because it's less cold down there.
You can use a combination of paint and then dip your brush in the water and then use that water to kind of smooth it out down there. But anything you don't like down here, we can cover up with the hills because the hills are gonna be darker. I think I want to make this area a little bit darker. So I'm adding just a darker shade of that purple. I think that looks pretty nice. When you're putting in shadow, there are three main areas that I put it in. I did kind of this upside down triangle to get the shadow here. I did a big shadow, kind of like a semicircle coming up that way. And then I did some shadow on this side. Other than that, you can put a little bit of that light purple color anywhere you want and it'll look really nice. I don't need to wait for this to dry before I put in my first foothill. In my foothill, I'm going to do kind of a bluey green color. You can make green by mixing blue and yellow, or you may just have a green paint already with you. I think we'll put in three foothills, and this first one is going to be more blue than green, and it's going to be a little bit lighter and they'll be darker as we get closer to being done. So I have a bluey green color and I'm just gonna go in and do kind of some squiggles in order to show those hills. I might have to go over that a couple of times to get it as dark as I want. And then just like with the sky, we'll go back and forth horizontally in order to fill that in. And you can go all the way down to the bottom. It's all gonna get covered up. You can just add water to your brush so that it gets lighter as you go down. Remember, this is gonna dry much lighter than it's going down right now. So maybe you wanna darken it a little bit by adding in more of the paint while it's wet. I'm gonna let that dry and then we're gonna add in our second hill and then our third and then we'll be done. Okay, our first foothill is dry. We're gonna put in our second one. And before we do, when we do the next squiggle shape for these hills, we wanna make sure it's not following this exact squiggle. Usually hills kind of overlap and they're not all the same. Oh, I got some water on there, whoops. Don't panic, just take a piece of paper towel. All done. Okay, I'm gonna use a darker color that's a green-blue, and it's gonna be kind of equal parts green and blue together. 
I'm going to start it this time going up. And I'll go over it a couple of times. Notice how I didn't make it the same line as the top one. I want them to look like natural hills and not too matchy-matchy. It's really fun to just fill in an area with color with your brush. Usually when I paint, I'm listening to my favorite music. It's just something that's really nice to do that is really relaxing. Even though it can be challenging, even though it might be something new and something that you thought you couldn't do, I bet if you give it a try, you can surprise yourself. Because we were all beginners at every activity we've ever done once. We've all been beginners. Being a beginner is totally fine. You don't have to be perfect at something right away. I'm either dipping my brush into my water just to bring it all the way down, or I'm dipping my brush into that paint if I want to add more of that color. I think I do. Just a little bit more. And because this is all wet with water, you can tip it and have gravity help you a little bit too. That's our second layer done. Once again, I'm gonna let it dry, and then I'm gonna add in our final layer. All right, that second layer is dry, so now we're gonna add our final hill. In the front, it's gonna be the darkest, and it's gonna be the greenest. So I'm just gonna take a lot of the green. I'm just gonna get a lot of that paint on my brush. And again, I don't want it to match either of these lines. In fact, I'm gonna have it be a lot steeper. 